bastard child of eight. Good evening. I'm Dr. Edric Berkowist. Join me tonight as we examine one of the most climactic conflicts in the modern era. For generations, the Nerf Wars have been raging constantly between the Green Nation and the Red Union. Many have debated as to what sparked the rivalry. Some say it was over natural resources. Some say it was a broken treaty. And some say it was just fun and games. How wrong they were. Tonight, we'll take a deeper look at Operation Nerf Herder, the Green's mainland invasion. This never-before-seen footage from the invasion has finally surfaced, and for the first time we can see what really happened. The Green's numbers dwarfed those of the Reds. A red victory seemed impossible. But how is it the Reds withstood this onslaught? I spoke to Professor Hank Andrews, battlefield strategist and former military intelligence officer. Just before the war, advancements in weapons technology allowed for greater firepower and range. This gun has been used during many battles because of its incredible reliability and durability. As you can see... Piece of shit. The turning point in the war came when the Greens' numbers could no longer match the accuracy and the precision of the Reds. The Greens' mainland invasion was the debut of the Reds' first automatic line of weaponry. It employed the very first use of battery power. It required no cocking, no springs. It was ingenious for its time. Mankind at its worst. And this was just the beginning. They say time heals all wounds. But what about psychological wounds? I talked to Dr. Mary Shepherds about the emotional after effects of war. The psychological effects of the war are really what we concentrate on when we talk about the Great Nerf War, because astoundingly, there were no casualties on either side um, physically, but the mental effects of the trauma, the post-traumatic stress disorder that these, these men would come complaining about, saying that they were having nightmares of styrofoam and suction cups flying at their head. I mean, can you imagine the hell that they were living each and every day? They came home virtually unrecognizable to their friends and family, even their kids. And it's understandable. They came home smelling of remorse and cheap styrofoam. These former soldiers may never fully recover. One of my patients had to be institutionalized when his son received a Nerf gun from Santa on Christmas morning. I get a lot of appointments right after the holidays. What people fail to realize is that battle scars aren't always on the outside. Were the zero lives lost really worth the thousands moderately damaged? Probably. But the real question is, when will it all end? When will red and green come together to form a beautiful color of unity? We may never know.